Oh, it looks like we're live. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Craig. Uh, this is where myself, Craig Hamilton Parker, um, talk to you all about things spiritual and make some predictions because I'm a psychic medium. So it means that I have a perhaps a different insight to the most people about how things go. And this channel has a lot of people that are very interested in this topic um, with other psychics joining us as well. So I was going to have a look at the um, <clears throat> comments afterwards if you're new here. And if you're live today, do please also share your comments at the end. Um, so anyway, so welcome to Coffee with Craig. Today we're going to be talking about Mm, all kind of things like political weapons and things like that and how people are using these things to undermine our society and some of the things that are happening in the news at the moment some of the topical things you'll be able to ask questions about as we proceed with coffee with Ray. <laughs> Hi again. And um, we're going to talk about some of the things that have been happening. And a lot has been happening in the news of late. Um, and it was hard to choose a subject today because there's so much going on out there. It's, it's, it's almost unbelievable. Some of the stuff you see going on, stuff that's going on in America with Trump, the stuff that's going on over here in the UK with the, with the um, build up to the general election and the and the um, uh, all, what's, all the things going on in Parliament, such as George Galloway and things like that. And some of the things that are generally in the news, too, the, the sort of things such as the um, things such as uh, immigration and uh, black history and things like that. So I'm going I'm to talk about a few of these things. I, I might miss out on a few of the things that are important to you. Um, and I'm going to give you a few predictions and thoughts about some of the things, not hundreds of predictions. Um, and also remember, also, when it comes to predictions, people like me are fallible. We don't get it all right. We get sometimes a good percentage right. Um, I was looking at my uh, 2020, 2020 predictions yesterday for I did for the royal family and things. And I watched one of the videos. And I thought <laughs> every single thing I said there was right. But sometimes I get things wrong as well. So, you know, the future. And this is the most important that I always remember with these things, isn't it? The future is not completely set in stone. I always tell this to people when they come to me for readings. You know, we might see the landscape, but ultimately how we travel over it individually and also collectively um, is what the real future is. So thank goodness it's not completely set in stone. But we come sometimes see things emerging. And I just want to share some of my thoughts with you and also some of the some of the thoughts about just where we're going generally, the spirit of the age, as I call it, where is the spirit of the age going? I think one of the most important things um, that we've seen this week, I want to first turn to America because we've had the uh, in Colorado, uh, we've had uh, the fact that um, they can't bar Donald Trump now uh, from uh, standing there and and this to me was one of the most um, scary things i've seen about the weaponization of um, pol politics weaponization in this case the weaponization of the legal system um the weaponization of um uh, the financial system in many ways by using financial rules in New York to, to clobber him as well and um of course trump's come out of this stronger than ever and i was been talking again, way, way back, that um, Trump is going to be the next president of um, America again. Um, and, you know, everybody was saying he don't stand a chance. He don't stand a chance in hell because there's so much against him and never get through it. 
but he said he's he's prepared to fight he said he's going to fight your fight and he said fight your fights yourself stop using these uh, prosecutors and judges um to 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 attack him and to and to get on with closing the borders and i think this is half the problem we've got personally with what we got with politicians on both sides of the Atlantic and in Europe as well, is that people are not prepared to listen to what the public want. Um, you know, an election is supposed to be where we listen to what the public want. But if we fix an election, uh, then we we can do we, we're not listening to what the public want. I think, you know, nowadays people are scared to speak out, scared to speak out on the media but also scared to speak out even when they they're talking to their friends and things because as soon as you say anything that's not an extreme left idea you're immediately seen as being someone far right um and i think everybody's lost the middle ground so it's it's kind of you know i think we're seeing very much a change in america's view of things because people aren't stupid you can fool some of the people some of the time but you can't fool all of the people all of the time and i think people are beginning to see through the charade that's being going going on over there and in fact it, the crazy thing is that these political sort of weapons that people use that what i call calling these things are political weapons misuse of structures in order to get your own way they can often backfire and and I feel that right in this month, we're going to see one huge, big backfiring of the misuse of political um, political um, uh, weapons. In this case, you know, the prosecution of Donald Trump, because already um, it, it's backfired. He's five points ahead. There was a poll done. I think it was in The New York Times. Um, a poll done at Siena College, I think it was in the New York Times, New York Times, which is very kind of lefty normally. And um, Trump's five points in the lead now over Biden. If there was a, if there was a, if there was to be a election in America tomorrow, um, he's five points in the lead. Forty eight percent said they'd vote for Trump. Forty three percent said they'd vote for Biden. Um, and there was all sorts of, you know, all sorts of uh, states are likely to swing to him, you know, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, loads of them. Um, so it's quite a scary time out there for the Democrats. Um, so I, you know, they, I, I feel that in the background, you know, people have been really trying to stop him by first and foremost, trying to make him go bust, to outspend him, use the state to outspend him. Um, and also, using the, the legal system. I mean, there's probably things wrong, but, you know, they've gone with a vengeance here where they don't go in the same vengeance, for example, with the Hunter Biden stuff, you know. Um, so there's definitely everybody smells a rat. And do you know what? I think that this month we might actually see the end of Joe Biden. I feel things are so dodgy for Biden now in March that he's going to uh, be ousted. We're going to see them get rid of him. They're going to find a way to get. I've been saying this for a while, but I just get the feeling now that what I've been saying for a long time is right on the agenda right now in March. So Joe Biden goes in March 2024. Will it happen? I think it will. I think it's going to happen. I think we're going to see Biden out. I think it's got to the point of the tipping point now. Um, so that's my first prediction for today. And as you know, timing is the hardest, hardest thing of all when it comes to doing any form of clairvoyance, because we see it and we, the timing is very difficult. But that's my first thought. That's my first thought today. So, you know, let me know afterwards in the comments what you think. Um, or obviously you guys are putting comments as we speak here in the um, live chat there. I can see I'll be coming to your questions and things and comments in a moment. But um, I feel that these um, these whole charges of insurrection now that they've been kind of stopped in Colorado means that it not completely put a stop to it. They'll still keep going. But um I think there's um, a lot to be said in the next month. I think we're right at a very important turning point now. It doesn't look good for Biden. So that's my first thoughts on that. And so when we when I'm talking here, the theme I wanted to talk about today is 
political weapons. And we're seeing them in all in all areas. We're seeing them here in the UK as well, of course, because um, we're seeing um, things like black history. That's a thing that I feel is kind of a political weapon in the background. In 1984, the, the novel by George Orwell, they changed history. They eradicated history so that all the history was entirely left. All the history that was left was everything that praised Big Brother. Right. And we're changing history here, too. I've mentioned this before, my my horror at this. And really, this is a very dangerous thing, I think. I mean, I was watching. I went to see the Bob Marley. Um, movie at the cinema with Jane recently. And I loved Bob Marley, one of my heroes, absolute hero of mine, Bob Marley. He was a marvellous guy. He was a real maverick. But the movie just sanitised it all. They didn't talk about all his interest in um, in uh, uh, the, 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 the sort of religious sort of um, Rastafarian type of thing, which I would have found the most interesting thing, and his his interest in Marcus Garvey and things like that, all, all just wiped away, you know. So even that's been sanitized, you know. I mean, and and so what we get, what we doing? We're we're changing history um, desperately bad in the background, and and that worries me a great deal. And it's all in the name of another form, what I feel is another political weapon, because, you know, we, we've been told that diversity is our strength in this country, in the UK, and that we're, the people in America are being told diversity is our strength. But there's absolutely no proof that diversity can be a strength, um, because I think it's become kind of more accepted now that multiculturalism here in the UK, and possibly people would say the same thing in Europe, and maybe in America, that multiculturalism has failed miserably. All the dreams of people like Tony Blair here in the UK, who wanted to import more and more people to make his um, people that would vote for his party would vote for the left. He wanted to import more and more people um, to boost the failing economy. And it worked for a short term. But long term, those same people have to have all the same facilities as everybody else. And they, too, get old. So that it's not it's a short term political use of immigration, but also as a weapon, I feel, because what's happened, you know, multiculturalism doesn't work. But that is it's the culture bit that's wrong. It's the culture bit. Ethnicity. Yes, we should embrace multiple ethnicity. That's true. We should embrace um, the fact that we're all different people and we work together. But we shouldn't be saying splitting the culture up because the culture of America is the culture of America. The culture of UK is the culture of America. Vive la France, etc. You know, all the different cultures of the world have their cultures and we conform to it. If I go and live in Italy, for example, I don't live there, but I go stay there a lot. I try to live and act and be as polite in the Italian ways as I can. Similarly, if I go to India, I try to dress in the appropriate way with them. And, you know, obviously I've got my own culture, but I I, I not just play lip service, but genuinely respect other countries' cultures. And this is the culture bit. It's not about ethnicity. It's not about racism. It's about ethnicity. You know, it's about culture. We are importing culture. And the problem is people like um, Putin, for example, will, who, who, who's KGB to the core and still acts and uses KGB techniques in everything he does now, has spotted this. And it's actually, I saw in the in the Telegraph, I don't need to read the Telegraph, but I don't always, I couldn't get any other one, but it said, Russia flooding West with immigrants. A political weapon, a misuse of immigration or migration by the Russians. They were saying in the article, for example, <coughs> that there's... Um, all the people from v w Wagner and things like that are encouraging and forcing people to the borders to push them further, further north and push them ultimately into Libya and then import them all into into Europe. Because this is a typical take KGB thing of way of destabilizing a country, a huge influx of migrants uh, overnight is dangerous and de destabilizing. The gradual import of immigrants and migrants is perfectly all right. It works and people integrate and the cultures become the same. But ultimately, this causes this, you know, we, we, they hide us under this idea of multiculturalism. 
So one of my other predictions is because of this, I think we're going to see um, great uh, problems in our society in the future. Same too in America. It's, there it's perhaps Putin possibly too, but particularly the Chinese. There's a lot going on on the borders, particularly if you go up the Darren Gap. I think it's got the right name right, but up through all there, there's a lot of Chinese influence going on there. There's whole camps of Chinese people, which I, I'm really interesting channel, a bald and bankrupt. <laughs> I'm both those things, but it's not me. It's another guy, bald and bankrupt. If you go and ever watch his very popular channel, he went up the Darren Gap there and Chinese influences on the way. Why? Why are those things there? Is there also is is migration and immigration being used as a form of political weapon? So I predict that there's going to be in the future um, that the future wars of of the world are going to be civil wars. So that's kind of a, a wide prediction that I make there. And it's not entirely my own you know, because that prediction comes also from the great Indian. Um, texts that look at the future the ones called the piranhas and the piranhas say that the future wars of the nations in our coming age as we move into the golden age ultimately but those future wars will be civil wars. and can we not see it can we not even see now the collapse of europe i don't know how you feel guys you know um is there not a collapse of europe coming because of the um the the, the internal strife that's being encouraged by using these political weapons, political weapons against us. Right. So um, going back to the, um, I've mentioned about I feel that Biden will go um, go quite soon before. Um, what else can I say about some of these things? I was I was just looking at my notes here. Um, who would replace him? Of course, would be the question. And if we look at it, um, one of the lead the leading people would probably be. Uh, Gavin Newsom uh, would be, um, what's his name? Andy Bashir, isn't it? I don't, I'm not American, so I don't know. And Gretchen something or other. Gretchen, Gretchen Whitmer, I think it is. But the three, those probably be the three uh, contenders. But they may want to hold back until 2028 when they know they can stand a better chance of winning. Um, I think I've said before, I felt ultimately, I think Gavin Newsom will probably be the uh, contender against Trump ultimately when it comes to the um, November election. So there's there's a prediction for you. Gavin Newsom, you, Gavin Newsom will be the uh, contender against Trump in the November elections in 2024. Um, so we see so much of this going on here in, in the background, don't we, with these with these these things. Um, I think one of the, the problem is is again that we can't speak out. You know, um, America's got uh, two million uh, illegal uh, immigrants. Uh, I should imagine. I don't know what the figures are for Europe. It must be much higher than that. Um, and then we have because of this also we have in the background a very strong, I, I think, swing to socialism. We have socialist influences in the background, particularly in the universities and in the schools. And I think many young minds are being um, pushed into a uh, a very blinkered way of seeing the world with a lack of debate, you know. And so we another so is what's coming out of this is another political weapon, which is woke, because I see woke as a way of undermining a country it undermines belief in yourself i believe people that so get so tied up in political correctness are almost obedient people um I, I i shudder when i like for example last night jane put some Jimi hendrix on when we were listening to Jimi hendrix music and another great black icon but a wonderful music which really shook the generations at the time and it wanted us to sort of change the world you know we want to don't want vietnam <laughs> we we don't want to we don't want to be like our fathers were fighting in the wars you know so there was real energy and power in the youth but what do i see now um horrible i, I feel like an old man moaning now and i am but i, I i'm saying you know why aren't they rebelling why aren't they why aren't they sort of saying, you know, I don't want to conform? And it's all it's all kind of weakness. It's all weak. Oh, I suffer so much. Everything's so awful. Everybody treats me so bad, you know. Um, 
And it's dangerous, I think, isn't it? And this is coming out, I think, of this extreme sort of socialism, this distortion that's in the background, which I'm seeing as another one of these, as I'm calling it, political weapons, you know. And the media are at fault with this, of course, too, aren't they? Because they don't report half the stuff. Um, we have to dig around to find um, commentators, for example, that, that that speak kind of outside of the, the, the given that we have to speak, as it were. You know, I actually quite liked Liz Trust, you know, I, I trust, not trust, trust. Um, <laughs> but she, but she, she failed miserably because the, the city turned against her immediately. And um, we're not having any of this. We're going to have to change our ways, uh, drop the stock market, kick her out. Um, and it happened. And I think there was much more behind that than met the eye. And now every time she speaks out, because she went over to America and spoke in America at one of the Trump rallies, um, our ex-prime minister that. One of our ex-prime ministers was here for a twinkling of an eye uh, for American viewers. Um, uh, she was she, she started speaking um, a bit more right wing because she could speak more freely there. And now they're all saying she's a conspiracy theorist, uh, a prime minister. You know, so it's like we pull people down, don't we? We destroy people by these words. And these words are very powerful. And I think this is another political weapon that's going on in the background. Anything mildly right is considered as something terrible it's immediately up there with um nazism or something you know you, you think you're terrible you know terrible people but it's the middle ground actually as i remember it and when we see people like george galloway um dangerous character there a a, a person who will um sell himself out to um the the islamic causes um uh, and yet he's there in rochdale where they've where that all the whole question has been about Gaza when the votes came in and rushed out. But, but rushed out was also a place full of all sorts of pretty terrible stuff that needs sorting out. I remember the uh, rape gangs in Rochdale. Uh, what about all that? You know, what, what, what surely that would be a higher things on the agenda than someone else's war somewhere else, you know? So I think we all think like this, don't we? Am I not? I'm just, I'm just speaking, I think, for the general feel of what people feel, you know? Uh, and this is where I feel, you know, that we're going to see the shifts and things. You know, we're going to see so many shifts. There's going to be, uh, you know, people are seeing woke. They're seeing um, going back to Black Lives Matter and things like that. And this another thing that annoys me, the king is supposed to um, speak out. They're saying the king must speak out against the slavery that, that, that the British Empire caused. Right. The British Empire caused all this slavery and he must speak out, they're saying to us. but um. When you think about it, every single culture in the world has been built on slavery. The first reference ever made about the British people in a written form um, was in the Roman times when they were called something like the people that we collect as slaves. British were slaves. Britain never, never, never shall be slaves. It's part of the, our motto, as it were, in part of the uh, songs we sing. It's it's. Britain were slaves. They were slaves to the Romans. They just came to Britain in the same way the Arabs went to um, um, sub-Saharan Africa and pulled all the slaves, you know, or the way the northern, um, the, the Egyptians would have used the slaves from all over the world, including, again, particularly sub-Saharan Africa, but also the Vikings. So it's a great series on um, Amazon Prime I'm watching. It's well worth a shot. There's the um, Vikings program on there, which, again, they would come and they would take people as slaves. When I went to Iceland and stayed in Iceland, the people there were saying, "What well, we've got ginger hair here a lot because most of the Vikings were taking the women from northern up from the north of Ireland and the coast of Scotland. So um, all the cultures, the, great, the ancient Greeks, it was built on slavery. There was those that were slaves and those that weren't. The, the, the Arab empires were completely focused on slavery. You know, and, and every pretty much every culture in the world has this in the background. The people that you conquered, you turned into slaves. End of story. Um, and so should the king be apologizing? Should the Romans, should Italy write us a letter and have their parliament and everything apologize to us for taking all the British people as slaves during the Roman times? You know, should Norway do the same to us and apologize to us uh, for and Denmark and Sweden apologize to us for taking our people as slaves during the times of the Vikings? 
you know it's been there throughout history and slavery is still here today except again it's another one of those oops lost my camera for a minute but it's, an, it's slavery still here today it's another one of those things that is um in a different form we are now all slaves to the wage you know we're all slaves without knowing it to the big corporate world who organize all these other hidden political agendas that we see coming up in um in in adobe and in uh, photoshop and when we use the new artificial intelligence systems and google which's been grabbed for overwokeizing um the the um the image productions and we get a black george washington and we get the same thing when we type in any question into the internet who decides what's at the top you know all the time we're being manipulated in every single direction and in particular we're being manipulated by big business and we all work for the boss man and we don't realize we're slaves and we think i'm a manager and jane said to someone who said that well you're the head slave aren't you <laughs> You know, it's there's it's become a world where there's very little independence and there's getting less and less and less and less and less of it all the time, you know, and because we all fall victim um, to these ideologies that are around at the moment that all disguise themselves as being good things. Black Lives Matter disguises itself as being something good. But I think there's something dangerous behind it. Woke disguises itself as something good. I think there's something dangerous behind it. Some of the political parties that are around say all sorts of seemingly nice things, but I think there's often very dangerous things behind it because we're not getting a free vote. We're not getting a free vote on things. And I think the Colorado business is something that will um, uh, uh, boost Donald Trump, Trump's chances. And actually, I see him as one of the few people who can actually shake it up enough to get us out of the problems. And here in the UK, we have Rishi Shunak, who's as weak as they come, and Keir Starmer, Starmer, who's just as weak, two absolute weak individuals facing up against a growing power in places like Russia and China and Iran and things like that. You know, I mean, you listen to the things about Iran, go and listen to some of the talks of Nixon, what he had to say about that. He actually had quite a lot. Right. And they kicked him out. Makes me wonder if they had some other hidden agenda there. And it's the same political thinking that went on there. You know, he was corrupt. But, you know, who, who, who isn't in politics? You perhaps have to ask. Anyway, those are some of my first thoughts. And it's interesting to think how these going back again, just to those Indian ideas, the Puranas, you know, they're not like fish. <laughs> they're actually they're holy books. But it talks about that it, so much of it in those in those ancient Indian texts seem to predict quite accurately what I'm happening now. I didn't realize they a lot of the things I've been saying are so close to it until I've started to read them recently in detail. And. You know, it says about the it talks about the advent of takeaway food. It talks about uh, the coming of uh, 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 basic moral decline. And it talks about the LGBTQ stuff in, in there, more or less, if you look at it. And you think, God, I saw that all those centuries ago. And it said this was all these were signs of the ending of Kali Yuga Ultimate. When these start, these, this is the ultimate darkness, the, 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 the period we're in at the moment. And it says that after a very disruptive period, um, the, a light does dawn. It's like a bit like the darkness before the dawn. And a, a, a good age does come, a happy age, which they call the Satya Yuga, comes. This is the age of golden age, the age of truth. Satya means truth. So it's the time of truth as we come out of the time of darkness. So let's hope so. I feel it. I've always felt this in my bones. I've felt that we will ultimately get there you know we will get there you know you think about it <laughs> we had a first world war and everybody thought that was the end of times surely we had the second world war and people thought that was the, when we see the atom bomb going off and things like that then we had the cold war we had vietnam and we had um so many other and then we had all the stuff that happened in um afghanistan and now we got it all happening in gaza um we do get there in the end albeit rather brutally and I, I feel we will ultimately make it, but um, it's um, always been a worrying period of history that we're in at the moment. But um, I do feel that it's the darkness before the dawn. 
Okay, now I see a load of you guys making comments now. And if you want to put your, I, I, I've i got a list on the side here and I can't get to, and I thank you for those of you. I saw a few little um, yellow ones come up where they say people have sort of given a little bit of a, um, a thank you, which I, I do appreciate. Um, I'll see if I can grab one of those. I'll do those because it's nice of you to do that when you do that. Um, Chinese have been buying farmland near U.S. military bases. Yes. And Biden let them all in. Um, all he has to do is close the border. I'm afraid for all of us, Craig. Thank you. Well, yeah, Elizabeth. I mean, that is there's so much of that and similar things happening in Canada, I've been told. Um, one or two of the Canadians have been making um, comments on here. And China has its fingers in everything at the moment i mean they are they are taking over africa they're taking over the ports around um or, or all around the areas where the, the boats are being shot about at the moment they get they're getting their fingers into canada they're getting their fingers into europe they're getting into all the electronic cars and things like that i mean a car can be used as a sort of a monitoring device apparently um this is not just this is mainstream news talking about things like this there's very very dangerous things afoot at the moment so thank you for that comment and thank you for that that that, that little there yeah. um here we go alexandra i always like your comments i see you come up a lot because i know that you're you know a great democrat and and so uh, well a supporter of that and i see you fighting your way through people sometimes all on your own uh, biden is trying to close the border the trump people won't let him um I'm not so sure that's the case, but you, you might have some more to um, add to that. Uh, I, as far as I, we can see it, again, the news is difficult, but you know that border really needed to be closed from day one, I think. And we need to close the borders here in Europe because you know we can't let more people in. Countries are getting flooded, and you know the co countries with the highest um, welfare system, sort of places like Sweden, where you can get a minimum wage, I think, and things like that, and all sorts of help, that they're getting overwhelmed and their systems are beginning to collapse, you know? So um, it's very dangerous. You can welcome to ask questions as well, guys, because now I, I'm going to be difficult for me because it's moving pretty fast on my left here. Um, did I miss it? Hang on. Got you. And I think it's interesting. USA is printing more and more money. It's going to be so much mess later. Um, indeed. Uh, whoops. Uh, get back to that. Um, indeed. Um, and one of the things I've said is I felt that March is this month is going to be a time for a bit of a financial crash, too. I said with Bitcoin. Now, I might be completely wrong because Bitcoin's gone shooting up. But um, could it be that usually you get a big spike like this and then it drops even further than it went up? And the printing of money goes on quantitative easing and all that that we get where they they take it all from us a little bit at a time and we don't realize it. And they seem to be in here in the UK. They, they seem to be thinking because we got a budget tomorrow, I think it is. Um, they seem to be thinking that they can buy everybody's vote by um, by simply giving us a, a couple of pence off the tax, you know, and that's not the issue, is it? I think the issues that people if people you want to buy my vote, I think I want to see some policies come out that are going to address the many of the things that I've talked about today. Woke in schools, a failing um, national health service. A, um, uh, I want to see proper transport. I want to better get on a train and know that I don't have to stand up, and pay a vast amount of money to travel the shortest of distances. Um, I want to be able to see I want to see that immigration truly sorted out, not a few people flowing back. I don't want to just see the end of illegal immigration. I want to see the end of migration legal migration. I want to see it reduced. You just want the cream of the cream in the country, not every Tom, Dick and Harry, no whatever country they came from. Um, so, so these are the things I think people need to address, aren't they? Congress always drops the ball. They procrastinate on many tough issues. And it's exactly the same here. We've got exactly the same sort of issues over here. We are all being swamped by a sort of um, Look at what happened here with Brexit in the UK. You know, nobody could make a decision. And you get democracy. Sometimes you, you could almost say that we're dying of democracy because our democracy is not working properly because there's no leadership on the one hand and there's no 
a consensus of opinion. And we seem to have a divided houses on everywhere in, in Europe, in America, in, in, in here in the UK. A divided house can't ever make a decision, particularly when you've got a, a kind of a, a council, as it were. The problem with these situations is that you usually get a long period in history of gradual decay and then someone steps in and they're usually not nice people. They're usually the Stalins. They're usually the Chairman Mao's. They're usually the um, Putin's and the rest of it. You know, they, the people step in, Napoleon, you know, they step in and, you know, the world's been toying with its losing its control of its democracy and you get powerful people and then wars and dangerous things like that don't you it's easy really to predict the future you only need to look at history and um unfortunately this is the thing i hate when i said about the way they're messing with history nowadays you know um it's all been played around with and, and being deliberately changed to such a dangerous level that I think, why, why, why? You know, all of this in the interest of trying to create a, a multicultural society and 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 pretend that it's always been with us. You know, I mean, sub-Saharan Africa had pretty much no history before um, it was dis, you know discovered by Europe, really. You know, um, so you know, this is this is why I hate to see this happening. You know, twisted things, for example, saying that, you know, Roman emperors were black Roman emperors. They weren't. They were they were from um, they were from Arab races, um, you know, or from Morocco, you know, and things like that. Uh, I don't know. Carthaginians, mainly. you know, anyway. So, so the world's getting distorted, I think. What was that one? Said there. Can you elaborate a little bit on electronic warfare that the US is dealing with China? My friend in the Navy says that they deal with hundreds every day. Well, I've been saying for a long time, and I think a lot of you that must watch this might feel the same, that there's been a secret war going on for a long, long time. I, I remember way, way back, way, way, I remember way, way back and talking about that um, China had broken into NASA. Um, this is going back in the early 90s, uh, and they'd stolen their, all their secrets, right? So that gave, China a huge leap forward all those years of trial and error to to send a, a, a to send a, 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 a man to the moon and so forth suddenly they had all that technology all that knowledge because knowledge is power and I think again this is where our education goes wrong in all all European countries we seem to sell out our education here in the UK we sell out our education um, so that uh, anybody can buy it you know, when we should be using it to educate our country so that our nation can become strong again. Everything's being sold and everything's being pilfered in the background by electronic means. And, um, you know, you in a second, you can download the whole hard drive of, of a computer and have, um, you know, centuries of work uh, that's got there in no time at all. So there's a danger. And this is where the wars go on now. And we're going to see more and more of this with the advent of artificial intelligence because AI, you know, um, you get people like Elon Musk talking about it, but he's just a lone voice. The guys out there just, you know, in, in politics just don't understand it. It's not until you start to play around with it a bit, as I'm sure most of you do now, but we only see what we see. And we only see the tip of it. How much could it manipulate? You know, how will you be watching Coffees with Craig in the future where I'm saying Joe Biden's a lovely guy? You know, I mean, you'll be seeing me. You could twist everybody and you won't know what to believe. Texan Governor um, Abbott standing up for Americans. Illegals are coming, committing violent crime in border states. And we have it here also, unfortunately, because we import the very worst of people, I think, people that come over on a boat are not going to be, uh, you know, illegally are not going to be the best of people. They're not going to be the scientists. We, Like I've said before, do we need any more sheep herders? And also that like they say, oh, they're emptying their prisons and their jails. We're getting the same thing here. We're, we're hearing in the UK here, you know, we, in America, you've got gun problems, terrible problems. In the UK, our police never needed to be armed in the past. You could walk through any part of a UK city anywhere, 
any city in the when when I, in the seventies, say when I was a young nipper, you could go anywhere. You might avoid one or two spots, but very rare. Now there's knife crime in all so in the little villages and things like that. We're hearing all sorts of um, crazy things, like people having acid thrown in their faces. I don't know if you've seen this in America, but here in the UK, there's a thing about a, a crime if someone's you know this is coming out of the the. Uh, islamic type of background countries you know uh, uh, that if someone has you know gone off with the girl that you want you it's such a dishonor it's the thing to throw acid in their face battery acid and other toxins in a per people's faces we've had multiple cases of this and multiple knifings um our society has changed beyond belief and it's not to do it's not to do with the fact that we don't have that much money um, because like in the 70s, the, all the docks were on strike and all sorts was going wrong and everything was fought, failing in, in British society. No, it's 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 people being coming into the, our countries who are the worst of the worst, not the best of the countries that come in here, not the not the doctors and the scientists and the and the agricultural knowledgeable people. It's just it's just um, all the trash and, and it's happening around the world. And I think this is where. The piranhas are right. The future will be a future of civil wars. Um, and I think we have to be very, very cautious of that. And guns again, and it's and again, the, we, we're going to start seeing much more use of guns in the future here in the UK. And then we'll start having our own gun lobby and all the horrible things that go with that. Because once they're in a society, it's a job to get rid of them. Because if the other guy's got a gun, you're going to want one yourself. That's the argument. So you can't have them in the first place. Right. Well, that's probably most of what I've got to say, actually. Um, <clears throat> apart from the fact um, you really ought to come and join me in my little circles that I'm doing now, because um, I'm, I did one last night and we, we were doing these clairvoyant circles where I do a little bit of mediumship to a group of people. Um, and we it was it worked out really nice, I think. We, a lot of people were getting some very nice messages from the spirit world. And I, that's where I, you know, I'm talking here today about predictions and politics and things like that. But ultimately my love is mediumship, proving life after death and showing to us actually that with all these troubles in the world that we see, ultimately it's um, what counts is the, is, is the bigger picture. You know, we will all leave this world one day. I will sooner than you will probably because I'm getting on now, but um one day we'll all be in the spirit and we'll look back at all the things we've said and done. And we might look back at the wrong decisions we make. We might be able to see the bigger picture of the world's history in the spirit world. We can read the Akashic record and see what's all that's been and see that all the potentials for what might be, and maybe have the choice to make whether we need to come back again or we have to come back again, or we can leave this world and move on to another plane. And so the spirit world, I think, can give us a lot of comfort. I think people that understand and know of a spirit world live better lives because we think in a bigger terms. And I think if more people understood that life goes on, that it's not just a short term grab it now and have as much pleasure as you can and as much money as you can and as much of everything you can. But really, that's just a small part of it. That The big picture is the spirit world. So you might want to come and join me. I'll put up. I'll put up a little. I think I can put a little video up um, to show a little clip of what we did last night. I'll put the link to the video of what we did last night. You can see what goes on. And if you enjoy it, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking to hopefully have more people do this because I do. I really enjoy doing it. And so there's two new workshops up there at the moment, which are basically sort of small groups where we do a meditation. Then I do some media. And if you'd like to join me on that, it'd be fabulous because. Um, uh, you know, that's a, it's great for me because I've also got to live, earn a living, but I like to earn a living in the way I enjoy how lucky I am. OK, well, thanks for joining me and do put some more comments. Keep coming back because this has become a bit like a forum for us, really. You know, it's a place where we can all share our ideas and um, come back and put another comment, even if you've been on live. And um, let's have your opinions. What do you think about some of the things I've said here today? Anyway, thanks for joining me. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.
if you look back at my earlier predictions, and in particular the predictions I made on the, the newspaper, the Sun's um, website, I did actually say on there, the actual words were, there will be a flu epidemic linked to bioterrorism. My thoughts are that Liz Truss will make it to the final, um, be, the, be the next PM. I think she will actually have a final battle between her and Rishi Shunak. We've not seen the full end of Boris Johnson either, I tell you. But Rishi Shunak, actually, will eventually, I feel, be the next leader of the Conservatives. So I think there's going to be a few conflicts that Britain's going to be drawn into, including um, I think Russia is going to take some moves against Ukraine. I think she will make it past her Platinum Jubilee, which comes up this year. But I think after that, we'll see a sudden and quick deterioration in the Queen's health. And um, I think I think we might lose the Queen towards the end of 2022. There's going to be a huge, huge backlash. Um, uh, from over the Netflix programs and screening because I feel it comes out in at a bad time. Charles will come to, to become King Charles, um, but his reign, I feel, will be short. I said that um, Prince Charles would be hit by an egg. And of course, there it is, all in the press today. A huge swarm of people knocking the doors of Europe and America. Um, and I feel that Ukraine conflict is going to be a kind of a grinding conflict that goes on and on. I also feel that there's something going to happen in the Middle East as well. I, I, I feel as if there's going to be a sudden and unexpected thing happen in the Middle East. So I feel they're going to take it into their own hands and I feel we're going to get a strike from Israel. This is going to be one of the significant things in 2023.